I'm going to be leading a wild edible and medicinal plant walk tomorrow at Healed Conservation in Pepro, Mass. And anybody in the vicinity is more than welcome to come. There's a group of about 10 or 11 people going so far. Um, but we welcome more people to join. It's free, just for entertainment's sake. Uh, and I also wanted to show you a plant that's just coming into fruiting right now that's amazing. And I've talked about it before in other videos, but uh, we'll take a closer look at how to prepare it and harvest it. These rather unique looking trees with leaves almost like a black walnut are Ristifina, or staghorn sumac. And as opposed to poison sumac, which only grows in swampy places, this sumac tends to grow in old fields or abandoned lots. This is an old abandoned orchard. And they have these bright red to almost um, maroon colored berry tops. And they have a very fuzzy stem, hence the staghorn part of the name. And these tops can be broken off and put in cold water, not warm water, because you'll remove the uh, tannic part of the seeds. And you want to rub them together between your hands. And there's citric acid on these little hairs all around the, the berry head. And this is what you want to put into the water. And the original pink lemonade was created, they think, based off of this. And actually Benjamin Franklin had invented a creation to scrub the citric acid off of these heads. And they saved many early settlers from scurvy which is a lack of vitamin C. And ironically, scurvy is easily present, uh, preventable simply by pine trees, consumption of their leaves as a tea, or by consuming sumac as a beverage. And this looks and tastes exactly like pink lemonade. And you need probably 10 to 15 heads for every one gallon of water, depending on the taste you want. But I'm gonna harvest probably 20 or so because I'm leaving a class tomorrow. And I'm gonna bring some of this along with me. The next step, once you've brought these home, is to fill up enough water so that just below the rim of a, a container, um, even a big saucepan would work as well. And you're going to take the heads of the sumac, and you're going to rub them between your hands in the water. And the goal is to scrape and rub the citric acid off the hairs of these berries. And you want this water to be cool or room temperature, but not hot because hot water will leach the tannins from the seeds into the, the liquid and make it um, really bitter rather than just sour. So I'll show you how a few of these are done. I usually just break them off as I'm rubbing them as well. And I'll discard the stem and then leave these in here and then move on to the next one. I think I mentioned this before, but sumac lemonade is the origin of pink lemonade, uh, the artificially colored and sweetened version that we now often consume. Uh, and this was a pretty common practice by Native Americans and a lot of the earlier settlers used it as well because they had a, a harder time in the winter consuming enough vitamin C to not get scurvy. And these berries preserve very well. They're very dry, they don't really have much meat to them. Uh, but you can dry them out and put them in a jar or a, a sealed container and they stay good for for quite a long time. I've never had any go bad, actually. And they can be made into a tea like this in the middle of winter. One interesting thing to, to note about sumac as well is that the inner bark of the staghorn sumac and smooth sumac are shown to be one of the more effective antimicrobials and antibacterials out of all of the eastern, eastern plants tested. Uh, so it's very useful as a tincture 
for sore throats, to kill infections, uh, and just aid in the body's ability to fight um, bacterial and viral infections. And it tastes really good too. It kind of tastes like the berries. It has that sort of tart flavor. All I'm doing right now is just rubbing the berries together in the water. I probably should have used a larger bowl for this, but I've used probably 10 or 11 sumac heads right now. And you're going to want the water to be very, very red. And you can always dilute it later if it's too strong. But kind of squeezing and kneading and rubbing together is the best way to get all the citric acid off the hairs. And when you're done, I just cup off the plant material. We're gonna give this one more strain anyways, but. Give you an idea of how dark it gets. Very, very dark. This would be extremely tart right now. Uh, we're gonna water it down slightly when we get inside and I'll show you what the, the final product looks like. After straining the plant material out, this is the end result. It's a very, very deep, pink, almost red colored juice. And at this point, it can be sweetened with maple syrup or stevia or sugar if you want to use sugar. Um, but stevia and maple syrup are probably the, the tastiest options for it. And again, this is high in vitamin C, it's high in antioxidants, and it's a good anti-inflammatory and antibacterial. Hope this inspires you guys to go out and harvest sumac and make sumac aid. Have a good night.